Hello, in this video we're going to solve for the marginal utility of income by using two methods, the Lagrange multiplier method and the indirect utility function. What you'll learn in this video is how to maximize consumer utility subject to a budget constraint by using the Lagrange method, how to interpret lambda from the Lagrange method, how to derive consumer demand equations using a simple method for Cobb-Douglas utility functions, how to derive an indirect utility function, and of course how to solve for marginal utility. So let's start with the consumer. Consumer is going to maximize utility. Uh, the consumer has $1,200 of income, the price of good X is $20 each, and the price of good Y is $10 each. What is the marginal utility of income? Here's the consumer's Cobb-Douglas utility function. And the budget constraint in general is just money income equals the price of good X times units of good X plus, plus price of good Y times units of good Y and substituting our values from the question into the formula. Here is the consumer's budget constraint. We're going to set up the Lagrange to maximize utility subject to the constraint. So here is our objective function. We're trying to maximize utility and we have our constraint where lambda is being multiplied through by the constraint. We're going to get three partial derivatives. We're going to take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good x and set that result equal to zero and here is the result of that partial derivative. The next partial derivative is a partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good y once again setting that partial derivative equal to zero and our last partial derivative is the partial derivative of the Lagrange function with respect to lambda and we just get back what is in parentheses and so uh, from our first two partial derivatives we have two equations and we're going to solve each equation for lambda so solving this equation over here on the left for lambda, moving minus 20 lambda over to the right hand side, and then dividing through by 20, we have lambda equals this expression. And then from this next partial derivative result, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to solve for lambda, dividing through by 10, we have this result. Next, we're going to set those two lambda equations equal to one another. So here's our lambda equations from the first order condition. Set lambda equal to lambda. And now we're going to simplify this and solve it for x. So multiplying through by 30 leaves us with this step. Following the rules of exponents, moving this x to the minus one third down into the denominator and doing a similar thing on the right hand side. And now we can cross multiply y to the one third times y to the two thirds is y. x to the one third times x to the two thirds is just x. So we get this nice result x equals y or y equals x. We're going to now plug this into our constraint. Here's our budget constraint. So we're going to plug that into our budget constraint. Where we have y, we'll now replace that with x. Solving for x, x equals 40. And solving for y, since y equals x, y will also equal 40. So this is a utility maximizing consumption bundle for this consumer. So to get the marginal utility of income, we can just evaluate lambda at our utility maximizing values for x and y. So here's one of our expressions for lambda. Let's just plug in 40 for x and 40 for y. And lambda equals 1 over 30. That is the marginal utility of income. It tells us how much utility will increase if the budget constraint is relaxed by $1. In other words, if the consumer had one more dollar of income. Let's look at the alternative solution. Here we're going to just solve for the indirect utility function. So here's our utility function. So with this utility function, we see that the consumer spends two-thirds of our income on good x. Notice that the exponent on x is two-thirds. So two-thirds of the income is going to equal the total spending on x. Total spending on x is the price of good x times the number of units of good x. So if we solve this for good x, 
solve it for x, we got the demand for good x. So this is kind of a shortcut way for getting the demand for good x when dealing with a Cobb-Douglas utility function. We can do a similar thing for good y. Here we'll notice that the consumer spends one-third of our income on good y. So one-third of m will equal the total spending on y, which is the price of y times units of good y. Solving for this for good y, we got the consumer's demand for good y. We're going to plug both of these demand equations into the utility function. So where we have x, we're going to have now 2m divided by 3 times the price of good x. And where we have y, we're going to replace that with m divided by 3 times the price of good y. So making those substitutions, that is our indirect utility function. And just rewriting the last result. And now evaluating the utility, indirect utility function when the price of good x is 20 and the price of good y is 10, you get m over 30. What is the marginal utility of income? Take the derivative of the utility function, the indirect utility function with respect to income, you get 1 over 30. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.